Hey everybody, this is Eddie Stevens coming to you once again from Whittier, California. If you can read that. I did a video almost a year ago on the Sire V7, which I still have and still absolutely love. Uh, that bass is just a deal breaker in the bass world. I kid you not. Anyway, so I'm coming to you today because I got the newer line. This is the Sire M7. You can see all that. The Sunburst, this is the Alder Body Rosewood Fingerboard Maple Neck and Hard Flame Maple Top. These are all the wonderful controls. And this wicked awesome bridge. So I do practical reviews, so the average guy can understand these things. I don't do a lot of chops um, because it's just not practical. I mean, chops are great to have, love having it, but not necessary for the gig. So again, this is the Alder Body Rosewood Fingerboard Hard Maple Neck Hard Maple Flame Top. I'm um, gonna first talk about the controls. The preamp is exactly the same as the V7. You get your stacked one up here, which is volume and master tone and your pickup blend. And again, these work in active and passive mode, that whole section that's active and passive. Then you have your treble, which is tuned at 10K Hertz or 10,000 kilohertz. You have your mid with sweep. Now this one, I don't know if they change the frequencies on it, but to give you an idea, when it's on the center indentation, it is 600 Hertz, because that's where, from what I understand, Marcus Miller likes to cut a little bit of. Uh, on the low end, it goes down to 80. On the top end, it goes up to 2K. So it's a huge, huge, huge range. Uh, and then this is the bass, and this is tuned to 20 hertz, um, which I don't understand why they went that low on it, because usually 20 hertz is just a, a frequency you feel more than hear audibly. Uh, that's the sound engineer coming me out, uh, in me coming out. But they did it down to 20 hertz. Okay, so we have the active passive toggle switch, which up is active and down is passive. And this is where it gets really, really, really interesting on this bass. So there's two extra toggles and one coincides to each pickup. So like this one coincides to th this pickup, this one coincides to this pickup. So they have three positions on the bass, on these toggle switches. Up is what's known as the parallel mode, and this is the brighter, what I think the more traditional humbucker sound. Um, and keep in mind, I've only played this bass on three gigs so far. I went into it blind. I want to let the bass do the talking before I did this review. Parallel mode is up. Center is single coil, like a jazz bass setup, and that uses the outer coils of the jazz, of these pickups. So it's outer, outer when you're going single coil. And down is the series mode. Now this is a really honking sound. It's a lot hotter signal, so you're gonna freak your sound guy out and your amp out if you just flip to this all of a sudden. I did notice on a gig that I did it with that either the single coil or the parallel modes was good for a solid, normal, this is my all the time level. And the one bass solo I had that night, I flipped it into series, it gave me that extra boost that I wanted. And it got it to be a little dirty when I really dug in, which can be a cool thing um, if you want to give it that extra grit. Uh, normally I would not leave it in series because it's just too hot. Um, and I'm one of those bass players that likes to leave the volume knob all the way up and just control the amp for stage volume. That way the sound guy doesn't get freaked up if you freak out if you go up or down a lot. Anyway, so that's the controls. I want to talk about the bridge so I can get a good shot of this. So it's a really nice, solid, massive bridge. And it's got the saddles you can go through body or on the bridge with the strings. And you've got the two holes that you normally have in the saddles for the uh, Allen wrench to adjust the saddle. But then it also has the third one back here on one side only. And what that does is when you're working the intonation, when you're working the screws in there, once you have it in the right spot for intonation, that locks it in. So it's a, a locking bridge of sorts. Um, and I didn't even notice that until my luthier who did a setup for me on this pointed that out and is a really, really cool feature. On the back, once again, uh, you got five bolts to connect it. I'm assuming that's a five string. They did improve the battery cavities where the length of cable, if you look at my last review on the V7, the length of cable on the leads of that was too short. They did lengthen that out. So thank you, Sire, for listening to your people that helped out a lot putting batteries in here. I can string through and that's where all your electronics are at. Okay? And this base is much lighter than the V7. Um, I don't know if they changed the V7 weight at all, but when I put this base on, it felt like it was a feather um, compared to using the V7 all the time, which I have the Ash Alder, uh, excuse me, the Ash Maple, and that one was super heavy. Okay, so I'm gonna play just a little bit just because I wanna give you guys an idea of what this does. 
Um, as always, I'm running it through, and I'll try to see if I can turn this around here. Stands in the way. Schroeder 12 tank cabinet, Gens Benz Shuttle 9.0, and the Aguilar Tone Hammer DI preamp, which is active. And on that, I have the gain and the master straight up 12 o'clock. Everything is 12 o'clock except just a little treble boosted, and then to both the amp and the preamp. Alrighty, so this is gonna be single coil just like a jazz bass. Good tone, and that's both pickups in the single coiled middle indentation. You could use that tone all day and be cool. I'm gonna flip them both up, both in the up position to the parallel mode. Now I noticed that that gave me uh, somewhat more of a, like a, almost like a scoop, not like a jazz bass scoop, but like if this is your middle of your frequencies, it's keeping the mids there, but it's boosting the lows and boosting the highs a little bit. A little more sizzle, a little more um, oak on the bottom end, uh, but still not too much. I'm gonna flip it down to series mode. This is the scary mode, so be careful. Again, like I mentioned, that's gonna be a lot harder, a lot louder, a lot fuller. Um, it's kind of like a weird, hairy tone to it. But for soloing up here, it really can give you a full sound as where on some other basses, when you're going up top, you lose some of the grit and some of the depth in the tonalities. Um, so, like I said, when you're kicking into solo mode, if you're going to do some upper register stuff, that's perfect. If you're going to do something in the lower register or slapping, you might not want to do it. Uh, a question that I'm sure may come up, when you're doing the pickup selection, series, parallel, whatever you're doing, does it work in active and in passive? Yes, it does. It works for both active and passive modes. So if your guy that wants to just flip to passive, forget the batteries, it still works. This is single coil. This is parallel. It's a series. So it definitely works in both. Now, can you make different combinations, one in single coil, one in series, or one in parallel? Yes, and I have found for me, my favorite tonality on this bass so far, if I'm leaving the EQ on it flat, is the neck pickup is going to be left in single coil, so it's going to be just that coil. And this one is going to be flipped up to parallel and it just seems to work out best for me. It's clear, it's concise. You get a little, it seems like you get a little more of that bridgey pickup sound, which can make it cut through a lot better, give you a little more top end. That's my favorite combination so far. Obviously, it's whatever is great for you. Um, not much else to say about this bass. It is 24 fret as opposed to the V7, I believe it's 20. So you get that extra range, and I did actually use that extra, you know, up the 24th fret of the G string. I did use that in church this Sunday, so that was kind of cool. It worked out. Um, the tuners are more, they're not the big ones like on the V7. They're the more, you know, I'm going to get a boutique bass kind of tuner. They work, nothing wrong with them. The bone nut is solid. Ups and downs of this bass. Again, the ups, the bridge is an awesome bridge. The vast amount of tonalities that you can create with this bass, uh, just by messing around with it, with the pickups, you got options for days if you're one of those guys that likes options. If you're just one of those, I wanna turn up and play, this might not be the bass for you, but for somebody who does a lot of different kinds of gigs, like myself as a working musician, this can really come in handy. Uh, 24 frets, hard maple fingerboard, uh, excuse me, neck, still feels nice and strong in your hand. Um, the rosewood fingerboard, I mean, everybody has a lot of bases with rosewood. Hard maple top, flame maple top, makes it look nice and pretty with the starburst. And the alder body uh, is nice and cool. Again, lighter, longer leads on the battery uh, compartments, which is nicer, better bridge, lots of tonalities. Something I also did notice before I end this video is in the stack pots, you know, which you have the volume tone one and then the mid with sweeper one. Um, when I move the top of the stack pots, often the bottom will go with it. Uh, the only thing to do with to get around that is to pull up at the top just a little bit so it's not as tight together because um, there's only a bolt, a tight end bolt on the bottom, not on the top. So that may be something that might have, you know, just to get used to. 
Okay, so this is Eddie Stevens from Whittier, California. The M7 bass, a good bass, but a bass you're gonna have to work with to find your your tone. Um, in comparison to the V7, the V7 is just turn it up and it sounds incredible from beat one. Uh, it sounds just like a jazz bass. This one you gotta work at to get your sound, whatever works for you and your fingers, because remember, your tone is in your fingers. I'm using Dunlop Super Brights, the lights 40 to 120s on this. Gives me a little more action. And if you're looking for slap tone, It's got all that for days. It's Marcus Miller. It has to. EddieStevensMusic.com. That's Eddie, S-T-E-P-H-E-N-S, music.com. Would love to see your comments. Subscribe. I'm not one of these big YouTube dudes, but I got a lot of hits on the last one. So, peace out, guys. If you got any questions, feel free to ask. I'll keep working with the bass and keep passing it along. See you later.